slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time, so let's get to it. There's a big poker vlogger event at Hustler Casino, so I'm in LA a couple days early to warm up. And while waiting for 2-5, I sit down at 1-3 where the max buy-in's 100. And while I really don't like shallow stacked poker, let's see what happens. I've got big slick in the hijack, raise to 10, and get called by the cutoff, button, and small blind. On a king high flop, after two checks, I bet 15, and cutoff raises. Correction, he tries to raise. 20. No, okay, I mean, uh, 30. 30. The others fold, and I'm confused. Min clicks are odd enough, but I really don't know what to make of a broken mouse. What could he have that justifies a botched attempt at a $5 raise? King 10? King 4 suited? Pocket 4s? A big combo draw? Above all, it's the invalidity of the raise that confounds me. Is this some angle? Is he a fool? Or is he playing me for a fool? In the end, I hate overvaluing top top, and given the shallow stacks where there's no maneuverability, it's either fold or shove, so... Uh, I just sat down. Uh, <sighs> Alright, give me credit for a set or something. And while I thought cutoff's erroneous raise was the moment the wheels came off, turns out this car has a few more spare tires. You got it? He's cleaning clubs. I keep cleaning. Are you calling if he shows? I would, yeah. I hate four, and I was gonna call you 15. Right also, not caught on tape, cutoff says he put me on sevens. Oh, and lest we forget, he flatted Queen's pre. Well, you know, I'd love to stay here and see how many wheels fit on one screen, but a 2-5 table just opened up. So good luck to you all with whatever is happening here. Are you blogging? Yeah. What's your name? Slow Poker. Oh, I think I watched your video. Oh, nice. I gotta get a hand with you, because then I can show my wife. Look, I made it. Sounds good, Ace4. Actually, can I call you just some pair? Great. So hey, JSP, how about you join me at the 2-5 table, and we'll see if we can make your wife proud. I've got queens, and after just some pair limps, I raise to 20 from the button and get called by the small blind and just some pair. After a subpar flop for queens and two checks, I could bet range here, but could also see a free card. After this turn and a second carousel of checks, this river entices just some pair to bet 30. He could have an ace or a five, but I know this guy bets and calls light, like earlier at 1-3 when I made a not so terribly heroic hero call with pocket sixes, so I'm probably good here too. Okay. Okay, just some pair. Technically, you've already made the vlog and you can tell your wife that you made it, but comedy comes in threes. Let's finish strong. As I'm stacking from pocket queens, the dealer says, I can do better. Early position limps. I raise to 25 from the cutoff and get calls from just some pair in the big blind and the limper. After this flop, as I'm calculating what I'll bet after both players check and flow, just some pair has a different plan and leads for 60. And here I was going to bet less. As limp caller folds, I scrutinize the flop. There's not a single draw to be had. If he's got a seven, he's check calling or check raising, but never leading. So this just has to be a weirdly played queen. And if that's the case, and it sure seems like it is, I only have to fade another queen or maybe an ace since I beat everything else. So I call. The turn's a brick and don't do it just some pair. Okay. You got a seven? Queen. And a star is born. Hey, Mrs. Pear. Slow poker. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Hey, so listen, your husband made it. He's vlog famous now. Uh, yeah, he just kept dunking into me while I was way ahead. Uh, about 250? No, I keep that. Okay, love you too. And now, yet again. Okay, okay. I've got ace-king, raised to 20, and the button three bets to 60. I sometimes four bet here, but I'll mix in a flat. This flop brings in two checks. Thanks for doing that discount double check. And the turn does likewise. Discount double check! On this river, I check, and button bets 75. There's rarely a six in this guy's pre-flop three betting range. So this'll probably be a boring chop. Unless, I do have the nut blocker in my hand. And while the bluff someone off a chop move isn't yet in my garage, wouldn't this be the perfect time to take her out for a spin? See how she handles? If I check raise big here, even check shove, Worst case he calls and we chop, best case he folds. I suppose the actual worst case would be if he was squeezing preflop with king queen of diamonds and is never folding the second nuts. So while this is a golden opportunity, I decide to play it safe. But do self pinky swear that I will do it next time. Definitely. Maybe. Probably not. They say a tie is like kissing your sister. And since I'm not dealt a playable hand for the next two hours, I just take out my phone and watch Empire. Well, I guess you don't know everything about women yet. I've got Ace King in the cutoff, and after both UTGs limp, my new friend Bob in the hijack, min raises to 10. Bob here has been getting a real kick out of my tight play, like 10 minutes ago when I finally didn't fold preflop. What the heck? Oh shoot! Oh my goodness, man. I'm in trouble. Bob's range is what some might lovingly refer to as expansive. And let's be clear, a min raise never screams premium. It screams, I don't like limping, but I do want to play, but this hand isn't good enough for a real raise, so I'll just bump it up a smidge just for fun. But slow poker isn't here for fun. Slow poker is here to film a fun poker vlog and also win chips. So I repop to 45 and Bob is delighted. <laughs> Oh, yeah.
<laughs> yeah, probably any two cards. Any two cards. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I kind of doubt I'm seeing three aces on a flop today, but I wouldn't complain if they showed up here. On a flop that's decidedly not three aces, Bob checks, and I check back. This turn is a relief, and as I assemble a bet, Bob regrets his choices. Anybody want to change three seats? <laughs> After a little tank, Bob realizes that his bad flush draw may not even be good, and while he didn't exercise discipline in mucking trash preflop, he does so here as he makes the good fold. I was like, I was thinking, oh, maybe someone doesn't have a heart. Well, in a sense, I have a heart. I've got ace-king, and after a UTG raise to 15, I'm on the verge of a 3-bet, but my spidey sense tells me the button has that plan in mind too, so I flat. Sure enough, with a great hand comes great responsibility, and the button raises to 55. After UTG folds, I call. Admittedly, my ace-king strategy is all over the map, but I like to stay unpredictable, and sometimes, I just prefer to see a flop. Not much here, so I check, and button bets 50. The gut shot to the wheel is okay insurance, and I've got the two overs, and it would be nicer if I had backdoor diamonds, and the folks at Red Chip Poker say this is a mandatory defend, and that in theory I could even raise here with some frequency, but I sure get the vibe the button knows he's well ahead, so I just call. On this turn, I check, and he bets 100. This player type is just never bluffing. I'm positive he's got an overpair, and while I've got outs to an unlikely straight, my overs may not even be live, so I decide it's time to pull the ripcord. And I'm glad I did, as he shows the goods. Oh, Ace King, we have such a complicated relationship, and on a good day like today, maybe I just open fold you preflop. Today I didn't even have to use my 8K. I gotta say it was a good day. <laughs> How do you film at the table? Well, at a forward-thinking casino like Hustler, they give me explicit permission. So props to Hustler for being ahead of the game. Otherwise, I film in stealth mode. 15. 20. I'm in the cutoff with Herbie fully suited, and regardless of the two limps behind, I should fold. That's it, just fold. A part of me wants to raise in protest, given the rampant limping at this table, and this hand can be playable, and it's the prettiest one I've seen in a long while, but the right move, again, is a fold. Instead, I succumb to peer pressure and overlimp. Small blind completes and big blind checks. This flop is a juicy one for me, and after small blind checks and big blind bets 15, I call with my open ender. But then small blind check raises to 75, and big blind shoves his buck 80. Alright, I know what big blind's got. It's usually bottom set or middle set. Small blind never has top set, but it's either another set, possibly some weird two pair or a draw like ace deuce of clubs or even five three of clubs either way it doesn't take long for me to calculate that i'm not even in the same zip code as the pot odds to call this off with at most eight outs and maybe only six and while i've got a real hunch i'd get there and button agrees Coming. i don't play poker based on hunches i play it based on math and the math says fold and the poker gods waste no time at all mocking my discipline <laughs> Look, I could stew in regret, but let's be clear. You can't be results-oriented in poker. I should have folded preflop, and I made the right flop fold. Also, I'm confident the very next hand won't somehow serve as an ironic twist to my aversion to getting it in bad. Yeah, that would just be too on-the-nose tragic. Do I have to show it? Do I? All right, fine. I've got ace jack, and facing yet another limp, I take a stand, raise to 20, and get three callers. On this flop, I bet just under half pot, and both small blind and UTG call. After a brick turn, I bet 100, and small blind snap commits the rest of his stack. I know I'm ahead, and have no clue what he's chasing, but given his reaction to this river, sure seems like he caught it. Mm. Hold on a second, what just happened? Flop with just a gut shot. The flop with just a gut shot. Okay, small blind, let's try this again, but this time, I'll be your poker coach, no charge. First off, you're short stacked, so you have only three options. A, top off, B, leave the table now, or C, wait patiently for premiums. No, stop, there is no option D. All right, maybe you'll get lucky and smash this flop. Okay, you didn't. With just a gut shot and no backdoor diamonds, this is an easy check fold. Sure, you might think, eh, it's 35 bucks, but even if you ignore the pot odds, that's a third of your stack. You don't want to dust that off with just four outs, and you do. Well, now you're double gutted, and while you got yourself into this mess, and sure, I'll bet you feel pot committed, you do just have seven high with only six clean outs. So let's pause, carefully run the numbers, acknowledge you don't have the odds to L you already shoved. All right, you backed your way into a win in the worst possible way, so at the very least at this point, show a little class, be contrite about the suck out, and don't be a jerk. Oh, you're gonna gloat and rationalize every bad decision. Oh, and you're gonna dance. Great. Uh, really good look. Well, anyway, now that you've hit your miracle double up, do not put that cash back on the poker table. You are alarmingly bad at this game. I promise you, this money will vanish within five minutes. So just leave now and go do something smart with this money. No, I was suggesting that you maybe... Eh, forget it, I tried. Well, that was terrible, unlike this smoothie.
Well, now that I'm resmoothinated, it's time to regroup and keep playing my brand of poker. Namely, get my chips in while ahead and recognize that sometimes bad players will luck into winning the small battles. But probability is on my side, and I'm winning the war. And no better ammunition than ace magnets. After two limps, I raise to 25 from the big blind, and hijack limper calls. Okay, dealer, just please don't put an ace out there. Dealer, I just said don't... Oh, never mind. We're cool. Here I find myself in what's known as a win-win situation, because unless Hijack's got the fourth ace, I pretty much win this hand no matter what. However, if he does have some random ace, and the board runs out the right way, a bad beat jackpot is triggered, meaning I win six grand, and everyone else at the table wins a nice chunk of change too. But I'm not a promotion chaser, though if someone hands me $6,000, that would be fine. I'd just rather focus on the hand itself, and try and block out all the other players getting giddy at the prospect of a big payday. Oh, jackpot. The flop goes check check, and on this turn, I have to start building this pot at some point, so I toss in 20, expecting a quick fold. But he doesn't quickly fold. He raises to 60. Let me reiterate, nothing beats me here but quads. And if he does have the ace, this re-raise is kinda cool. Still, both his whole cards have to play for the bad beat jackpot to kick in. So if he does have the ace, then as long as his kicker is higher than the turn and river, we all get paid. So if he's got, for instance, ace four of hearts, and this river's a queen, all bets are off. But this three on the river is perfect, and everyone realizes that this could be it. So all I have to do now is shove, and if he snap calls, then we all know it's party time. Oh, yeah. All of you are getting bonuses for $1,000. Yeah! Congratulations. You got the ace? Oh. You got the ace? Wait, is this a jackpot? It's so great about the bonus. No, no, it's not true. Of course he's got jack nine. I mean, if you really stop and think about it, why wouldn't he have jack nine? Look, yes, it is a massive disappointment that we can't all celebrate Christmas early. So instead, let's all celebrate what the hijack just did. Limp calls with jack nine of diamonds. I like that hand too. It's a fold to a big re-raise, but fine. Bluffs turn with a flush draw that's long dead. Can't say that's gonna work too often. And snap calls the river shove. I guess playing the board, despite the 10 boats that beat the board boat? How big is this screen? I've got nines, and after another limp from Jack High Jackson, I raise to 20, and the big blind and limper call. And the flop is dressed to the nines. I bet 25, big blind folds, and jackpot tease calls. And the turn is the best card in the deck. This type of hand is always fireworks, and all I need to do is light the fuse. Please join me as I guide you through poker inevitability. First, I bet relatively small, just barely one third pot, giving the impression that I don't like that king. Now he'll put on a show, counting out calling chips, playing it off like he might fold. He'll look off in the distance, pretending it's a tough decision, but but in reality he's doing internal cartwheels that he just two outed me and cracked my rockets. Now he'll change course, assemble raising chips, and bump it up big. And then, eh, enough narration, let's just watch. Heads up. Come on in. Get on me a chip and represent. Yep. Snap call. Damn, only at the message. What am I fading, a jack, or an ace, or a queen? Sit down. I mean, you gotta feel for the guy. For this to happen, only minutes after I stacked him in the classic cooler of Pocket Kings versus Jack Nine. I know, the better hand wins twice? How does that happen? I'm in the small blind with an AM radio station, and after four limps, I raise to 25 to isolate, and isolation accomplished, as all four limpers call. And of course the flop has two overcards, and I won't be bluffing into four players, so I check, and it checks around. On this turn, there's nothing else to do but check again, and everyone follows suit on this nothing river. I think to myself, wait, am I gonna win this thing? I check, and it checks around? No! And that may be the weirdest $100 I've ever made. Hi, I'm Slow Poker, and you too can make 100 real US dollars in 60 seconds using my tried and true method. Just raise from the small blind with two of these, and then check down all streets. Then just sit back and watch as you beat trash hands like this, this, and all of these. And that'll do it for episode 10 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, comment below. It really helps the channel. And stop procrastinating and get your tires rotated. I keep telling you, until next time, this has been... Slow poker. Come on, man.